Hey, good evening, everybody. What's up? Welcome. It's, what is this, Wednesday night? I, my days are kind of off. It's time once again for the Football Guys Daily Fantasy Hour. It's presented by Roto Grinders. I'm Dan Bach. We've got the Lee brothers in the wonderful thing that I have learned by being able to do this show and going to live finals is uh, I mean, you meet a lot of people and I've met a lot of people this week and are like, you know what? I love that show that you do with the Lee twins, brother, cousins. So I'm glad that uh, I've officially made you guys related. Austin, John, welcome. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Uh, yeah, and we are related uh, very, very closely. We just haven't figured out exactly how yet. Um, but I'm having a great day because today we found out that the Fantasy Sports Trade Association nominated this show for best, uh, what is it, video over 30 minutes long, video show over 30 minutes long. Uh, so that was pretty sweet. Yeah, that was exciting, John. I mean, we've been doing this show year three. It's about time somebody recognizes, like, if these guys are going to wear feather boas and pretend to be rappers, like, the least we can do is throw them a bone and give them, like, a nomination. Like, that was that was nice enough. Yeah, I was at uh, my real job today, and I, I basically come to the conclusion, when this announcement was made, I, I have, it's either, it's due to one of two reasons. Either there's a very big, uh, 18 to 24 female demographic amongst the uh, the nomination committee, or they're really big hee haw fans, and I'm not quite sure which one it is. But uh, either way, uh, I'm proud of you boys. Uh, we finally did it. We finally broke that glass ceiling, and uh, we're going to be on tonight's show. It must have been both. I think we needed both of our key demographics pushing hard to make this happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made you question whether you needed it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. We did include Hee Haw into the uh, sizzle reel of the show. So, John, like you dressing in drag might have put us over the top. Like it might have done it. So, These are the things we I, think, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, see, I, I wasn't appreciative of that in the moment, but right now I'm looking back and saying that was a smart move, John Lee. <laughs> um, uh, again, if you're new to the show, we have a lot of fun here. We get you set for the week. Obviously, it's still a little bit early. There's a lot of injuries that we're going to talk about. We still don't have full certainty on, and, uh, and we're going to kind of help you navigate the early week look at this week 14. Before we do, Austin, let us know what's going on at Football Guys this week. I know we've got some uh, some live finals going on and some big finals, big tournaments in DFS, and I think you guys are doing some special stuff around that. Yeah, we like to line up some of our free articles each week with what's going on in the industry. And so Fantasy Draft has their live final uh, this weekend, the Carolina Million. So we have a Fantasy Draft roundtable talking about that dual flex and how to best use that. It's already posted now if you check that out over at footballguys.com slash DFS. And then later in the week, we're going to have two FanDuel articles that are going to be free to coincide with their big live finals events that they have going on this weekend. Yes, and uh, the one thing about the FanDuel slate this week that you need to know about is no Sunday night football, no Monday night football uh, on their main slate. They haven't had Monday all year, but Sunday they normally have. One week thing, uh, you know, it's kind of a weird week for it because I think, like, honestly, Thursday – Sunday night and Monday might be like the best games of the week for fantasy wise. I think there's some good games on Sunday, but fantasy wise, those guys are, those games are loaded, but um, I I don't mind this, John, you know, kind of coincides. They got a million dollar first place payout tournament that they're rolling as well in conjunction with it. I think if uh, you know, you've got all those people out there anyway, in California, you give it a chance to kind of sweat that as well. So I think for one week we can, we can handle FanDuel, not including Sunday, but I know you're like me. Um, we don't want this to become the norm. And they've already tweeted out and said they're going back to including Sunday next week. So that's good news. Absolutely. I mean, it, I, I, you're right. The, those three games are the best. We have Baltimore, Pittsburgh. We miss out on Sunday night and then Monday night, New England. So we don't get any of those, those guys. And then, of course, that Thursday night game, we'll cover a little bit in the show between New Orleans and Atlanta. So we're missing out on all of these. But you know, I kind of like what FanDuel's doing because they're throwing out that $250 uh, millionaire maker, so to speak, uh, and they've been running qualifiers into that all season. 
And so uh, even for the, the people who don't play that, uh, you know, that big of a bankroll, maybe they've, had, they've gotten a chance to get a, uh, an entry into that guy. And, uh, you know, you get to play along with, with the folks out in California and uh, see how you would have fared uh, on the same slate with the same choice of players and so forth. So it's kind of fun to do that uh, you know, on one week. But uh, I am, like you, happy that they're going back to it on Sunday or the following Sunday. All right. Uh, we usually open the show, and I say usually open the show with Losers Lane. And uh, of course, it was me versus John. And if you didn't know, I basically built one lineup on DraftKings because it was out in, in Florida Keys at Key West for the King of the Beach, which was an amazing event. I mean, I have to say, uh, it literally um, was one of the top live events I've ever attended, and I've probably been to about 20 of them. Uh, Key West is a fun place. Meeting all the, the different finalists is just, it's one of my favorite things about going to these things. Uh, the one thing that sucked though about the weekend was my lineup because I finished third to last. So let's just put it this way. If John couldn't beat me when I finished third to last, well, I don't know. He might've had to done losers lane for like the, the next year and a half, but he didn't. So technically I'm supposed to stroll down losers lane, but um, so many things. And I didn't get back till Monday. My voice is still off. I've got a million kids things that I've got going on right here. I wasn't able to get to it. So this is my proposal to you guys. Okay. You listening? You ready? Yeah. Ready. My, pro my proposal is you two will face off next week and whoever loses will do a duet with me, but I will provide all the lyrics and all the content. You don't have to do anything except do what I come up with. So therefore, you know, Loser's Lane continues. I'm going to partake in it, but we'll have a, a, a fun duet. What do we think? What do we say? Austin, do you think he's setting us up here? <laughs> because he, we did he's, not. <laughs> he's going to be in control of writing the things that we say and do. Does exactly. it smell like a trap? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this over email today, and Dan was uh, mysteriously quiet about his proposition, and that makes me a little bit scared. But, uh, you know, I've known you long enough, Dan. I'll say that I'm in. I'm in. All right, duet it is. The last time we had a duet, it was uh, Beastie Boys, John and I, at the start of last season. I think this next duet, we can raise the bar from the Beastie Boys attempt that we made. All right. Well, now we've got everybody waiting for next week's Losers Lane. So that's, that's good. Now we've got extra incentives. So I'm excited for this. I'll have my, uh, my co-writer get working on it. I've got two weeks to pump this out. And it's just a matter of, of which one of the Lee brothers I get. We'll see. Will it be Austin? Will it be John? Uh, we'll find out. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get to this week 14 here in Daily Fantasy Football. And, fellas, we've got our injury update. That's what we started off with. And it's a big one this time of year. So many guys are banged up. And it's hard to even get clarity on that this early in the week and especially at the quarterback position we've got uh tyrod taylor who is uh, doubtful with a knee injury here um and boy austin i mean nathan peterman's just been just abysmal so far as a starting quarterback in the league just absolutely terrible yeah well five interceptions and a half of football is uh, not a great start so uh i think if taylor doesn't play in this game you're going to want to sort of avoid this whole Buffalo mess. I don't expect it to see a dramatic improvement. Uh, one, one start removed from that disaster. Yeah. We'll talk about LaShawn McCoy and whether that affects him too much here a little bit later, but John, I think the interesting guy is Matthew Stafford here this week. Um, and it's a date against Tampa Bay, which we've seen has been a terrible pass defense all year long. I mean, his hand looked really messed up uh from that uh, in that game the last go around um but they said that like he you know he said he's saying the things that makes you think he's gonna play um do you worry about whether it's going to be a hundred percent what's your kind of thoughts on Stafford because matchup wise it's pretty decent against Tampa Bay 
Uh, yeah, I mean, matchup-wise, the uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks are 31st DVOA against the pass this season. They've they've been uh, blistered through the air, so certainly the matchup is there. But uh, like you said, his his hand. Uh, you've seen pictures on Twitter. They, it looks terrible. Uh, he played today. He didn't throw any passes. Uh, when he said he played, he practiced today. Didn't throw any. Uh, didn't throw any passes. The um, the thing that's more scary to me is that uh, if you saw the the Lions injury report this afternoon. Now we're recording on Wednesday, so keep that in mind. But four out of the five starting linemen were on the injury report. Uh, that, that's scary to me. When you have and Amir Abdullah was also on it. So your running backs on the injury report, and eighty percent of the offensive lines on the injury report, and your quarterback. Uh, is pretty banged up and not throwing passes. For me, I've got to take a step back and say, yeah, I might be away from it despite the matchup this week. So unless we see some uh, some rapid progress over the next 48 hours, I think it might be uh, a fade despite the matchup. Yeah, uh, it's he's going to have no ownership too. Like even if he's cleared to play, I think people are going to be – kind of afraid to play him and you know this is a week and we're going to talk about it throughout the show is there's incredible value on it like last week I didn't really feel good about my lineups going into that tournament and it kind of showed this week it feels like there's definitely some plays that are going to open up things for you some underpriced options some guys who got opportunity who played late on Sunday and Monday And uh, the sites weren't able to account for that. And I think it's going to be way easier to be building lineups. Now I say that, but in these like massive GPPs on like FanDuel or the Millionaire Maker on DraftKings, there's a lot of game theory this week that we're going to kind of talk about as well as the show goes on. Uh, Eli Manning also going to start this week against Dallas. Uh, Maybe, I mean, talk about the biggest waste of a streak ever. Like he had this long starting streak And like, we're going to put Geno Smith in. And then now it's like, oh, no, we're going to go back to Eli. Uh, I mean, sorry, Eli. I mean, I don't don't want more to say, Austin. Yeah, I mean, if they had started the rookie last week and at least like, you know, used that to see what they had, then fine. But Geno Smith, we know is bad. Like, you only have him on your roster in case like Eli gets hurt in like a worst case scenario. But that was just a waste. But, you know. The coach is gone. Uh, GM's gone. So uh, everything's different now and better. All right. I, I got to ask you, John, are you buying this new regime narrative I have thrown out to me today that like these guys are going to be like more motivated to play that Ben McAdoo is gone? No, I'm not buying that at all. <laughs> okay. I'm just, <laughs> just checking. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I, who, who sold you that routine? Or who, that, uh, that I, I don't know. I'm not going to name okay. names. Okay. Uh, it's early in the week. Things okay. happen. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not buying it. Uh, I, I think that this team is largely a fade outside of potentially Sterling Shepard if he gets healthy by the end of the week. But outside of him, I have no interest in this team. I think that they're, they are giving it up and, uh, you know, potentially just going to sell it out for a quarterback draft pick and the draft this year. All right, at running back, uh, Thursday night's interesting. We're going to spend some time on that, on game flows in particular. But one bit of news you got to keep your eye on if you're catching this Thursday uh, morning. Mark Ingram did not practice on Wednesday. And, I mean, Alvin Kamara has been a revelation, John. And it, it's kind of almost scary to think what he's going to do if he potentially has all the looks in the backfield. But this also it feels like a spot like, oh, he's going to get all the looks. He's going to get all the touches. And then he puts up an absolute stink bomb. Like I've seen this happen before. What's your kind of thoughts on this situation here real quick with Kamara, if there's no Ingram. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, he's 8,400 on DraftKings and over the past four weeks, looking at his totals on DraftKings, 30 points, 40 points, 26 points, and 28 points. And all of that was done on less than 20 touches. It's insane. The the efficiency that this guy is showing uh, in his rookie season is is absolutely incredible. And we're talking now on Wednesday night, like he might see, what, uh, 50% more touches? Does that mean he gets 50% more points? Uh, I'm tired of, of... of naysaying this guy and saying he, he can't continue this. I have zero idea, but um, I'll cheat ahead a little bit. 
and say that uh, I think if Mark Ingram doesn't play tomorrow, his ownership is going to be through the roof, through the roof tomorrow night. And from a game strategy perspective, I think you need to fade him and just hope that he comes back down to earth and has an average game because he's an average game and he's 30% owned. You're going to have such a leg up on the remainder of the field uh, heading into those Sunday matchups. And we will um, obviously talk about that game in general. Highest total in the week, 55, like not even close, like really should be a shootout tomorrow night. Uh, Joe Mixon, concussion, did not practice on Wednesday. I think he's doubtful. And Gio Bernard is going to be a name you're going to hear so much. He is in our chalk talk. Big shot there. Uh, So we'll get to him in a little bit. Uh, Adrian Peterson, uh, questionable and uh, did not practice Wednesday. Austin, it was funny. He didn't play this past week. And I saw some people, you know, talk up DJ Foster. And then I don't even think DJ Foster played quite much at all in that game last week. It was Kerwin Williams show. Um, I don't think he's any good, but he didn't look too bad last week. What's your thoughts on Kerwin Williams? Uh, I'm not buying into this at all. Like, I think this is going to be a negative game script situation. And uh, I'm, I don't want to be playing Williams uh, in that type of situation. This this may be his – this is his best game of the year. Stay away. <laughs> Uh, but this next one, I think is kind of interesting here, John, it's Doug Martin concussion. Am I, are, am I seeing probable here? That's kind of sad to me. Cause I thought Peyton Barber looked pretty good last week, over a hundred yards rushing looked pretty good the week before. I feel like they wanted to give him reps. Um, but are you seeing like, he's going to play this week, Doug Martin? Cause that's disappointing to me because I think he actually, would have been a really nice pivot against his Detroit defense, which has just really been dreadful the last couple of weeks against the run. Yeah. I, I mean, as of now, uh, Doug Martin, as I understand it, is still in the, the concussion protocol, but it, it is thought that he'll come out of the, the concussion protocol um, by the end of the week. That said, Doug Martin hasn't looked good this season. Um, he, he, you know, he, he came off of a suspension, I believe early in the season, everybody thought that, He'd have some, uh, some fresh legs, so to speak, and he'd do his thing. And here you've got this, uh, this rookie running back, Peyton Barber, who impressed last week. And if I'm, if I'm a dirt cutter down there, I might just say, you know what, let's see what this kid has uh, moving forward. So um, this is one of these deals where it's kind of a disadvantage to be recording on Wednesday night, because I don't think we have clarity with regards to what's going to happen. uh, If, if Doug Martin uh, clears the concussion protocol, but I, at the very least, I, I think my gut feeling is that we're going to see a split this weekend if Martin plays. And if Martin doesn't play, then I think you have to consider Barber uh, against the Detroit defense this 25th in terms of DVOA and allowing 4.23 yards per carry to opposing running backs this season, which firmly puts him in play uh, on, a, on, a, on a limited week. Last week, the only guy I think I got right on my entire team was Theo Riddick. He did give me a touchdown uh, in that matchup at a dirt cheap price. The price has come up a little bit, Austin. Um, and we've got Amir Abdullah questionable in this game against Tampa Bay. Uh, if if Abdullah wouldn't play, would you go back to this Riddick well, even at the price hike? I mean, he was under 4K last week. I think he's uh, mid fours potentially this week on DraftKings. Yeah, he's at forty five hundred this week. Yeah. Uh, so that's a pretty big hike. Uh, the matchup's nice though against Tampa Bay here. So if Abdullah were out, I think on DraftKings only you could still consider him. But we've got some other cheap options here that I think are easier to consider. You know, obviously Gio Bernard is a guy that you could look at. Um, Mike Davis, I think, against Jacksonville, you could look at at only 3,700. Uh, even old man Frank Gore against Buffalo might be in play here at 3,900. There's a lot of guys in the 3,000s that you could consider that you don't have to lean on Theo Riddick at 4,500. Can we draw the line at Theo or at Frank Gore, please? Can we just be like... Buffalo has been horrible against the run. I'm not saying that he's high on my list, but like... There's a lot of I mean, options I, in the 3000s. I make fun of John for being old. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't surprise me if Frank Gore is like older than John. Like, <laughs> he's the, like the one guy in the league who yeah. I could make a case for being older than John. So, him and Adam Vinatieri. Um, 
<laughs> Terry, that's a good one. Uh, all right, over to the wide receivers. We've got Sterling Shepard, who is questionable this week. And John, you did say you might have some interest in him if he would play this week. And I'm with you. Uh, he was in my chalk talk segment, and he's really cheap this week. Uh, I think over on DraftKings, uh, let's see, 6.4, or sorry, 6.4 on FanDuel, 4.3 on DraftKings. I think both sites, Sterling Shepard's way too cheap versus your Cowboys defense, which, man, they haven't been good much at all this year versus the pass. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Shepard runs quite a few quite a few routes out of the slots, and uh, Orlando Skandrick has been really bad this year. Um, running out of the slot and he's likely going to miss this game I think it's confirmed actually he's going to miss this game so the Cowboys are flipping some people around it actually worked for them last week against Washington uh, and you can make the argument that the the Giants being in in such disarray maybe it'll work again this week flipping around that secondary but I think the loss of Skandrick actually makes it even worse for them they're actually going to flip uh Xavier Woods uh, an undrafted free agent rookie um out of a safety position and put him into the nickel cornerback position there and I think that uh Sterling Shepard's going to be too much for him to handle uh I suspect he'll have a, a decent game especially with very few uh, uh weapons elsewhere on that uh, Giants offense so keep your eye on that bit of news did not practice Wednesday but if he practices Thursday or Friday I think he's extremely viable this week. Mari Cooper is out of concussion protocol, but his ankle is still questionable. I don't know if he's going to go. We'll get to Michael Crabtree in the next segment here as well. Uh, let's get to Rashard Matthews. Uh, hamstring injury, probably going to play, but also probably going to play versus Patrick Peterson. I think that's a pass for me. Robert Woods, I still think he's another week or so away. A huge game here versus Philadelphia, Austin. I mean, this is really the highest total that we have on the main slate. And we'll talk about these QBs here in a minute, but uh, I didn't really document any wide receivers in particular for chalk talk. Um, what's your feeling on the St. Louis side of things, especially after two games now without Robert Woods? You mean the, you mean the Los Angeles uh, Rams side of things? Whatever. Uh, St. <laughs> Louis, uh, San Diego, LA doesn't have a, until they get a stadium, they don't have a team. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> They're like nomads or something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I would say that uh, Cooper Cup's in play in GPPs in this matchup. His price is especially appealing on FanDuel where he's only 6,400. He's priced up a little bit over on DraftKings. Um, and then the, you got to look at the Eagles' top two receivers as well. Aguilar's coming off a big game. Jeffrey has been getting a strong amount of work i don't have any of these guys on my cash game lists but all three of those guys are very high on my gpp lists i feel like you could uh, almost run the quarterbacks out there naked without wide receivers this week because uh it's hard to know exactly where it's going to go zach Ertz, whether or not he plays is another one that we're gonna get to here in a moment uh we've got the houston texans will fuller bruce ellington both these guys Pretty banged up. I doubt we're going to see either of them play. Ellington's definitely out on the injured reserve. Um, John, okay, let's just say Braxton Miller also doesn't play. We don't have him on our list, but he left the last game with a concussion. Uh, he might have already practiced this week. But who else do they have? Who is their other wide receiver on this team? Just curious. Do you know? Uh, there's a guy. They call him Nuke, I think. Right? Is that this? Well, not him. <laughs> okay, not not that guy. Okay, <laughs> other wide receiver. That, that is that is the other wide receiver, but uh, besides Kobe Hamilton, Nuke. Kobe Hamilton, Chris Thompson, Kobe with an I, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot. Uh, you know, it, it'll end up being it. I, I actually think Will Fuller is going to play. Uh, I think he had a, a limited practice today. Yeah, um, he still has two two cracked ribs. Um, he. He's talking sounds about like him. a great sounds like you should be playing football with two crack trips for sure. Like <laughs> that is absolutely what my doctor would recommend recommend me doing. No this doubt. Is, two uh, catches, two touchdowns. This is week fourteen of the NFL. I mean, everybody's playing banged up, and uh, I you know he banged up. He got cracked ribs. <laughs> Can't they like break and they puncture your lungs and stuff? Like no, no, don't do that. The person we should be talking about here is Steven Anderson. So, yeah, 
Uh, CJ Fedorowicz last week concussed again. Uh, he's going to be put on IR if he wasn't already. And Steven Anderson, I think, had 12 or 14 targets last week. Yeah, a ton. Yeah. Uh, five catches, 79 yards, touchdown. CJ Fedorowicz, for what it was worth, was one of my my top uh, tight end plays last week in, in GPPs. And it would have been a great call if he didn't get concussed because obviously they threw to the tight end quite a bit. Uh, but this week, I think it's going to be a lot of DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, and then you'll see overflow action to um, Anderson. And Will Fuller likely is just going to stretch the defense on nine routes all day long. And uh, Lamar Miller is also, I think, in play this week uh, because um, they, they should be able to run the ball against this 49ers defense. So that's kind of how I see this playing out. Yeah, uh, I agree. They should be able to, the same way Jordan Howard should have been able to. But um, you can't run 35 plays in a game and uh, expect the running back to do it. That is the truth. My <laughs> goodness, what a horrible job coaching that is. Uh, all right, we've got uh, Kevin Benjamin questionable versus Indianapolis here this week. Chris Hogan, I saw, have a practice uh, in their game in uh, for the Patriots. They play, of course, Miami on Monday night football. Probably only relevant for that Monday Thursday slate, obviously. Uh, or Thursday, Monday slate, and any primetime action that you're looking at. Juju Smith-Schuster suspended. Uh, again, another kind of Monday, uh, Thursday through Monday. Got to get that right. Um, Martavis Bryant obviously gets a little bit of an upgrade there. Uh, Zach Ertz, doubtful to play this week with a concussion. Trey Burton, John, I know he is a guy that you've played previously uh, as a sub-3K crapper. I think he's kind of back potentially as a value play here today yeah he's definitely uh somebody you should be considering i think i like anderson a bit better for all the reasons i just talked about i think he's at a similar price point uh both of those guys for what it's worth we should we should point out they play against defenses that's uh at least purportedly from dvoa perspective have good defenses against the tight end position but uh, anderson goes against san francisco San Francisco, I, I have them as the third best DVOA defense against the tight end position, but that's with a caveat. They've allowed six touchdowns to uh, tight ends over the past six games, so I, I'm not so sure I'm buying into that. With regards to Burton, uh, some people are going to talk about Brent Selleck here, right? So Brent Selleck is playing about 60% more snaps than Burton. But I don't think I should. Uh, people should be confused by that. Uh, I think Burton is the guy that's going to be running routes, and Selleck is the guy that's going to be blocking. And um, so, for that reason, uh, if you're playing anybody in this game from the tight end position, uh, it probably should be Burton. Um, but I will again point out that this is the fourth best DVOA tight end defense in the Rams. So uh, for me, I think I'll go. I'll go a different direction. I need you. Uh make a request out to all the uh the stack guys out there austin take take notes you're into this stuff oh yeah we need not just dvoa or or strength of schedule we need last like like five games or even last three games strength of schedule dvoa especially right now because like you said there's so many injuries like if you looked at san francisco's defense when the year started to what it is now. I mean, it wasn't good when the year started, but almost everybody has gotten hurt. And uh, I think it can sometimes change the scheme that they run. So he's going to so, tell uh, you something. It, it, and, tell me and something. SLS, last five, right? Yeah, normalized strength of schedule has both year to date and last five. Uh, so Boom! Yeah, and I always compare those two numbers because it's inter- interesting to see where it's trending. So, for instance, yes. San Francisco for normalized uh, fantasy points allowed to tight ends, it's uh, 23rd, like pretty strong against tight ends. And now it's only sixth in the last five games. So uh, those touchdowns have really skewed it in the last five category. They come up looking as the sixth best matchup for tight ends in that way. See, and that's why you got to subscribe to Football Guys so you can get Austin's normalized strength of schedule for the last five. I just requested something, and Austin (laughs) gave it to me in, like, five seconds. Like, that was the best. So uh, (laughs) I'm going to start, you know, observing that tool a little bit more. I didn't realize you had the last five. That's good stuff. Um, Rob Gunkowski is out again. It's it's Monday Night Football. Uh, Awesome. Let, let's let's look at this from a really 
micro side of things because I think the most people who are going to look at that game it's going to be that Sunday Monday primetime slate how do you think that plays out for New England um, with no Gronk what's what, what do we do is there somebody really low owned we could go to what's your thoughts real quick on New England I mean, you got to look at uh, Jacob Hollister, min price on both sides. If you're looking for a tight end replacement for Gronk, I think he's your guy and he could be some nice salary relief. I think in terms of the receivers, the other pass catchers, it really depended on whether Chris Hogan plays. Um, You know, I think Hogan playing drags down Cook's value a little bit. Uh, I think Amendola could have been a nice play here if both Hogan and Gronk are out. He sometimes sees a little bit of an uptick when Gronk's out. But Hollister's the guy I like the most for an uptick with Gronk being out. I just got notified that um, one of the guys I met in Key West, Dave, is now joined Roto Grinders and watching our show. And this guy was like the life of the party. Like, <laughs> uh, you know what the best thing about this guy was? The, he was a plus one for somebody else. And he was one of the two guys that I actually beat on the final so you know I I actually had bragging rights over like his buddy so that he made it even better but we had a great time all weekend long welcome Dave to the Roto Grinders world and community great to have you uh all right let's get to chalk talk we've talked a lot about these guys already so we're going to kind of move through this a little bit faster real quick John golf versus Wentz highest total game in the main slate uh who do you prefer versus the for those two guys uh, I, I think I prefer golf. I, I just think that this, uh, it, you know, and it's my anti-homer bias. I say it all the time about the Eagles. I don't think the Eagles are that good. Um, their record says that they are. Uh, last week, they played their first team with a winning record all season, and they lost. Uh, I think they lose again this week. Uh, I think that Goff, I think, is, is a, a much better quarterback. Eh, I'll take that back. He's not a much better quarterback. I think they're both very good quarterbacks. But I think Goff has a better uh, offense around him, and they're playing at home. He's the guy I'd rather have in that matchup. Although I think this matchup um, could go under. I think that a lot of people are overvaluing this game. These are two very good defenses, and so I may actually stay away from both of them, because, especially because if, if the ownership is a bit high. I kind of agree with you, John. I, I don't think they're my top targets here. Um, I think uh, Derek Carr versus Alex Smith is kind of interesting as well, Austin. We saw last week, you know, that game shoot out. I mean, if you stacked up the Jets in Kansas City, uh, you were probably related to the uh, Chipotle brothers and won a lot of money because they took down everything. Uh, what do you think, Carr versus Smith on those two guys? What do you think? Um, I like Smith this week. I mean, that's – it feels like I'm just going back to the guy who had a big week last week. But that Oakland defense – is near the bottom on all of the sort of passing yards allowed to quarterbacks and receivers. So uh, I like Smith's matchup a lot, uh, especially playing at home. Yeah. I think the price is a little bit hard to swallow on him. That's my bigger issue between those two guys. But as we talked about tons of value this week, you can make that work. Um, John uh, value wise, there's a couple of guys I want to talk about. We've got Jimmy Garoppolo, And Dak Prescott at 5.5, 5.6. Garoppolo versus Houston. I think this is a sneaky good spot here for Garoppolo. He, you know, played well last week. Wrong side of the touchdown variance. In Houston, we've seen give up a lot of big, big yards to quarterbacks. Maybe not last week to Mariota per se, but man, this feels like a Garoppolo could easily go for 303 touchdowns. I mean, not easily, but that range of outcome I don't think is is crazy I don't think it's crazy either I mean one of the things that um, we're going to talk about or hopefully we have time to talk about this game uh, this game should be fairly fa- uh, fast paced Houston and San Francisco two really quick offenses uh, last week Garoppolo threw for almost 300 yards in that game that we talked about against Chicago and Chicago slowed it down to a grinding halt uh, you, you've already pointed out this is a good matchup in terms of personnel. Houston's been bleeding yards through the uh, through the air, so I, I can get behind it. I think that it's a it's a pretty decent call. So he he's definitely in play for me this week at a cheap price. Austin, real quick, are we completely fading Russ versus Jacksonville this week? He's really cheap on DraftKings, FanDuel. They didn't really account for the matchup, but on DK, 
they're tempting you. They're saying, hey, we want you to take Russ. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to be watching uh, Steve Buzzard's ownership uh, numbers over at footballguys.com. Um, if the ownership is low enough, I think that you have to play Wilson's upside even in a tough matchup. Uh, but this is a DK only and an ownership play. If it gets below like in that 4%, 3% range, I, I'll have some exposure to him. He's got him at I'm seven jag- right now. Seven right now? Look- all right. Seven right now would be tied for third highest behind Rivers and Smith. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Whoa, R- really? Yeah, I'd be under on that. Yeah. I I kind of I kind of think that he's good this week. And I'm a Jags fan. So makes me I mean, he just so so on right now. He does everything for that team. Um, you know, Baldwin will go from the slot, which I think is a somewhat of a weakness there for Jacksonville. Like I I'm not afraid of using Russ this week, and our, and I our love the Jacks. Bloom loves him this week. He uh, he tweeted out. Now, I don't love him, but I'm not afraid to use him. Okay. That's I, I also think there's lots of really good GPP options this week, especially cheap quarterbacks. So that also influences my decision. Playing Deshaun Kaiser under 5K, Austin. Yes, yes, I am. Ooh, there we go. I I had a hunch had that a hunch. rushing floor uh, it really makes a difference. It does. It does. And he's been running a ton. And let's face it, Josh Gordon is going to be major chalk at wide receiver this week, too. I'll be curious to see how that correlation uh, works. Quickly, Giovanni Bernard, at what percentage, John, of ownership do you need to sit back and say, I'm not playing him in GPPs? Because I think he's going to be super highly owned. We've got him at, uh, I think, upwards of like 35% on our projected ownership. Um, yeah, we current we currently have him at thirty, and I think that's a bit too low. I think it's going to be thirty five to forty percent. Um, we have a question later in the uh, who do you got about uh, chalk in tournaments and Gio Bernard at thirty one hundred. If Joe Mixon doesn't play, this is a great matchup. I, I I'm going to have a hard time staying away from him if he's anything less than forty uh, percent. I mean, it, it's it almost feels like a free square. You just beat your players, you beat your opponents elsewhere. Kind of tend to agree with you a little bit on DraftKings. That price is too cheap. I mean, if it was 39, I would have been like, okay, we can go yeah. up to a guy in the fours and and pivot and be all right. But 31 is just so cheap. Um, that's what happens when you price guys before the games are played. Uh, we've got uh, Jamal Williams versus the Browns. You worried at all about Aaron Jones there, Austin? Uh, after, you know, he only had one carry, but it was a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, he only played two snaps, and then he had that, you know, 20-yarder for a touchdown. Uh, I think this was – he's healthy enough to be a backup if we need him kind of situation, and I think we're going to see more work from him in this next game, like more of a two-thirds, one-third split in favor of Williams still, but I think Jones is going to eat into Williams' value enough that I'll be off Williams this week. Uh, a couple of other names, Mike Davis against uh, Jacksonville. John, I want to ask you about him. And then your boy, Alfred Morris, who uh, takes on the Giants off of a big game last week, over 120 yards. Yeah, I mean, Mike Davis, this guy, he reminds me a bit of um, Chris Carson, uh, maybe not from a running back perspective, but in the sense that he's he's one of the few running backs over the past uh, few years that has looked decent behind an otherwise bad offensive line there in, in Seattle. Uh, last week, he averaged about four yards per carry. He caught every pass and was thrown to him out of the backfield. Um, the matchup here uh, is against Jacksonville. Pretty tough, especially since they brought in uh, Darius, Marcel Darius there from Buffalo. Um, but his, his price is still, it's, it's not limiting at 3,700 on, on DraftKings. So I think he's probably still in play there. And even on uh, FanDuel at 5,500, not entirely a fade for me. So uh, I, I think that you could do worse than going with him um, in, in this situation. Now, Alfred Morris, Alfred Morris, a little more expensive because he had that big game uh, there on, on uh, I guess it was Thursday night last week against the, uh, the Redskins, ran for over 100 yards, surprised quite a few people, myself included. And he came back now and he's uh, 6,800 on, on FanDuel. I'm looking for his price on DraftKings and 5,500. 5,500. Yeah. And that feels a little bit too high for my liking. 
uh, for the value that he brings to the table. The, the player I like a lot from the, the Cowboys this week is Des Bryant. I think Des Bryant has a really big game against these perimeter, uh, perimeter cornerbacks. Uh, no more Janoris Jenkins, who went on the IR. You've got Ross Cockrell. You've got Eli Apple. Uh, he totally outclasses them. As long as Dak Prescott's able to throw the ball, I, I highly believe that Des, uh, excuse me, Des Bryant scores a touchdown and possibly two in this matchup. If you think he's gonna, if you think he's gonna score two, then you play him and Dak together because they cost you like next yeah. to nothing over on DraftKings this week. Uh, Austin, let's get moving here. I gotta talk Josh Gordon. I mean, we got him at thirty-five percent on our uh, percentage owned on DraftKings, thirty percent on FanDuel. Are you suddenly buying this after one game that this guy should be the highest owned, maybe wide receiver on the slate? Yeah, I mean, last week he had a really tough matchup. This week he has a really easy matchup. Last week he had 11 targets. Uh, he's a play for me, man. He's, he, he deserves to have that high ownership, especially 5,500 on DraftKings. They didn't juice his price up enough. 6,700 on FanDuel, uh, you know, you got some other options in that range. I'll still play him, but 5,500 on DraftKings, you bet. Yeah, John, my concern is, I mean, Kaiser, his – he can't even throw it like 50%. Like he is really, yeah. really bad when it goes to throwing the football. And that's important if you're a receiver to have you to have a quarterback that can get you the ball. Um, you know, we talked about Bernard and like eating the chalk and beating people other ways. I don't know if I feel that same way about Gordon in GPPs. Cash games, I'm with you, Austin. I'll fire him and, and kind of move on. But GPPs, I think I'd rather play the game theory with, with him if he's going to be the super high on guy. I, I, I agree with you. I think this, this might be the most we've agreed on uh, a show uh, throughout the show all season, but I I'm with you here. I, I think, um, you know, last week, let's, we, we should point out that he was playing a, a very good defense as I guess Austin already has, but um, that's not just on the wide receiver. I think a lot of times quarterbacks, when a guy like Casey Hayward is, is all over your, your wide receiver, you tend to be a little cautious and throw the ball even further away than you probably should from your receiver and hope that he can make a play. He's not going to have to do that this week against this Green Bay secondary. I mean, they lost their uh, arguably their best uh, cornerback in Kevin King, um, their first round rookie, uh, first round rookie cornerback pick from this this season. He went on IR this week. They they uh, they activated a, a Dimitri Dimitri Harris or somebody and uh, from the pup list and he didn't even practice today. They're a complete mess in that secondary. So uh, I think that Gordon's a guy that we should be looking at. Um, but if he is, as you point out, 40% owned, I'll probably have him less than the field because of Kaiser, but I'm still going to have exposure to him because the matchup is too good to ignore. All right. Uh, one guy I want to talk about quickly before we get to the rest of the show, which we've got like no time left for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Crabtree this week. I think Marcus Peters being out is a huge deal. Um, Kansas City does not have a good defense, and they're going to lose their best corner this week because he picked up a flag and threw it into the third row, which, by the way, I love this era we live in where people catch flags in the third row, and the first thing they start doing, taking selfies, taking <laughs> selfies with the flag. I loved it. It was great. Um, but I am all in on Crabtree this week, Austin. I think uh, I think this is a huge, huge loss for that Kansas City defense. Yeah, and this is not the Kansas City defense that you saw early in the year. I mean, they're just hemorrhaging points left and right. And so to lose this corner is a big deal. Crabtree's price is even better over at FanDuel, only 7,100. Uh, 6,700 on DraftKings, still worth playing, but FanDuel for sure. This is a great matchup. All right. We talked about tight ends. We like Anderson. Kelsey's fine. Of course, there's lots of value to be had. You could play him. Um, and I'm going to throw a Hunter, Hunter Henry in there as an option as well as a potential tight end play. But I want to get to game flows real quick, John, because this Thursday night game is so interesting this week. Um, how are you playing it? Like, uh, who are the guys that you that you're looking to play most here? It's a total of 55. Uh, what do you think, Thomas, Julio? Give me the give me the read on this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks like uh, Marshawn Lattimore is going to try to come back. If he does, he should shadow Julio Jones. Uh, I think I'll play it by ear tomorrow. And by, by that, I mean I'll be on Twitter trying to find out exactly how healthy Lattimore is. 
he was a near miss last week. He he was going to play, and at the last minute, they kind of canceled him. So I suspect he'll be active tomorrow. And as long as I can get a, a good feeling that he's, uh, let's say, 80% or better, I think I'll be avoiding Jones and his lofty salary and likely elevated ownership. Uh, I'll have I'll, I'll have zero Matt Matt Ryan because Matt Ryan has been pretty much horrendous all season, uh, given his uh, his his 2016 campaign. So I'll be avoiding him as well. Uh, really, probably avoiding most of that Atlanta offense. The only player that I really like is the guy I told you earlier that I might fade because of ownership, and that's Kamara. I mean, it, it's a perfect matchup for him, um, and, and uh, you know. They've been they've been terrible. They being Atlanta has been terrible against the rush all season. Atlanta's actually back to full strength with their secondary in the sense that they've got Desmond Trufant's back, Brian Poole's back. I think that that helps shore up some things. So really, Kamara is the guy. If you're going to play somebody tomorrow night, he's the guy that I'm most interested in. Um, and I, I turn it over to you and see what what you guys think. Well, I mean. Those backups did shut down Stefan Diggs last week. Yes, I played him. Um, so maybe they're not so bad anyway. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm with you. I, my, my only thing is this is a huge total. This total is really high. It makes me wonder. If it's potentially – it, it has, has it dropped a bit? What's it's it at right now? It's three points since it opened. It, it okay. opened it uh, at 54 and a half. It's down to 52 as of today. I mean, Still we really haven't high. seen – yeah, it is pretty high, but it's it's not ridiculously high. Like, I think it opened at, at that 55 number. I mean, we haven't seen a Bree. Has Bree's thrown for four touchdowns in a game this year? I don't think he has. No, he had a three-touchdown game. Between him and Matt Ryan, they only have one three-touchdown game all season. That's unbelievable. Yeah. After they, they probably had, you could say between the two of them, maybe – 20 last year they had 17 mm. between the two of them last year okay, if you wow. include the playoffs wow so yeah it's uh, what a difference a year makes my goodness what a difference a year makes yeah. all right john let's get into the wide receiver cornerback matchups here um tell us who we should be monitoring good and bad this week well we've already talked about josh gordon against green bay secondary i told you kevin king was thrown on the ir dimitri goodson not dimitri harris was the one who was activated from the pup earlier today they activated him from the pup and then they didn't they didn't practice him so what does that tell you i don't know Uh, that's why you don't get his name right okay (laughs) like this is the fourth friendliest defense to wide receivers they've allowed two touchdown games to three different receivers this season Antonio Brown, uh, uh, Marvin Jones, and even Cole Beasley. I think Josh Gordon's in an excellent spot this weekend, and his price probably is not high enough, which is why he's going to be 35% owned. DeAndre Hopkins goes up against uh, Dante Johnson. It's the biggest mismatch in terms of pro football focus. They, they give you uh, who's going to be on who. This is, by the numbers, the biggest mis- mismatch of the, se- uh, of the week. Excuse me, uh, Dante Johnson. He's allowed the 10th most receiving yards in coverage this season, 555 of them to this point in the season. Larry Fitzgerald goes up against Logan Ryan. Uh, Logan Ryan's allowed a 116 quarterback rating over the past five weeks, including three touchdowns over that period of time. That's 55th out of 68 qualifiers. I've already talked about Sterling Shepard and his matchup against Xavier Woods, so I'll, I'll split, I'll skip that, excuse me. And then uh, Des Bryant uh, goes up against Ross Cockrell and Eli Apple. I think this team is about to collapse. Uh, they, they just have nothing to play for at this point. And that perimeter uh, cornerback crew has been terrible all season outside of Janoris Jenkins uh, in the early part of the season. In terms of avoids, these are guys that you want to be thinking twice about. Uh, Devontae Adams coming off of a semi-eh game last week. He could have another one this week against Jason McCourty. Uh, McCourty uh, is 10th overall this season on pro football focus, but I will point out he has been struggling as of late. He's uh, actually 60th out of 68 over the past five weeks. So maybe you want to look into that a bit deeper. Do not uh, avoid him. I bring him up because I think it's kind of interesting. Rashard Matthews, if he plays, he's going to get uh, shadow coverage from Patrick Peterson. We talked about him earlier. Whoever Patrick Peterson is shadowing, stay away from that receiver. I think if it's not Rashard Matthews, it's more than likely Corey Davis. Uh, Peterson's only allowed 18 receptions all season, which if you think about it, to week 13 is kind of crazy. 
And then lastly, uh, T.Y. Hilton goes up against Tredavious White. Tredavious White last week, he was the recipient of that uh, Rob Gronkowski, whatever the heck Rob Gronkowski did on the sidelines. He had him completely uh, out of his elements. Uh, this is a really good first round pick. Um, he, he's had a, an excellent rookie season. And uh, 25th at, out of a total of 87, a 73 quarterback rating. He's allowed less than 50% uh, completion rates. And he has as many touchdowns as loud as he has interceptions. That's three each. And then, of course, we know that T.Y. Hilton does not play as well on natural grass as he does turf. And uh, this game is in Buffalo. So he's a guy I'll be avoiding this weekend. We've got our fool's gold bounce back. Um, I, I'm questioning whether we should even do this segment after last week where I said Alvin Kamara, John said Robbie Anderson as both fool's gold. I don't even know who Austin said. He, he ejected it from the whole entire spreadsheet. So it was probably Alex, like Alex Smith or something. Alex, Alex Collins. Collins. So <laughs> yeah. Leg- legitimately could have played all three of those guys in like yeah. one GPPs. Um, let's take a crack at it again. Uh, this is what I'm rolling with. Gio Bernard will not be on the Millie maker winning team on draft teams. That's going to be my fool's gold playing him in cash. I'm just telling you game theory. I don't think he's going to be on that team. Uh, my bounce back though. I kind of like Derek Carr this week versus Kansas city. Marcus Peters out. He hasn't had too many smash spots this year. It's a little risky, but I think he actually has his best game of the season this week for Derek Carr. Uh, Austin, what you got? Uh, My fool's gold is Jamal Williams at Cleveland. I think we're going to see more Aaron Jones this week, like we talked about earlier. And my bounce back is Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not playing him in cash, but he's at the top of my GPP consideration list. Uh, I like him a lot at Houston this week. All right, John, what you got? Uh, For fool's gold, uh, we had Kerwin Williams. You and I talked about him last week, whether or not he was worth uh, playing as a value play on Sunday morning. And uh, you did tell me, I think I'm going to quote you here and say he sucks. And then he turned out to run for uh, for 97 yards that afternoon. So, um, you know, this week he's 3,900, 5,000 on uh, on FanDuel, but he's got a pretty tough matchup against Tennessee. They're only allowing 3.4 yards per carry. No running backs gone over 80 yards on them all season. And then uh, in terms of value added with uh, pass catching, DJ Foster's getting a lot of that action. So I would avoid Kerwin Williams, despite what he did last week. I, I think he's fool's gold. Uh, on the other side, I talked about this earlier. Lamar Miller hasn't had a 100-yard game all season. I think maybe this is where he gets one. You know, he doesn't have Dev- uh, Dante Foreman to steal looks from him any longer. Um, last week, Andre Ellington caught a bunch of passes out of the backfield, and everybody might be looking at that saying, wow, yeah, maybe uh, Ellington's going to steal a lot of action. But uh, a couple of those Arizona receivers were out of action last week, and Ellington got a lot of those lining up from the slots. San Francisco's 20th DVOA against the rush with 30% uh, more fantasy points allowed to the running back position over uh, league adjusted opponents. I think this is a great spot for Lamar Miller at low ownership to bounce back. All right. Well, we are running out of time. I don't even think we can get to who you got this week. Um, All I know is one of you next week will be singing with yours truly. So if you want to just, if you just want to punt your game all together to have that honor, just let me know. <laughs> okay. Just, just do it. Like it's go ahead and, and play, play Gronk or somebody <laughs> like, you know, play somebody who's not even on the slate. Uh, we will see. It will be fun. I promise you that. Uh, hey, we've got to get out of here, but we want you to, of course, subscribe to football guys. If you haven't done so already, if you want to chase, Maybe some of these FanDuel satellite seats in NBA. Why not try Roto Grinders? That's right. If you're new, uh, we've got a seven day free trial. Try our content before you buy it, and so much good stuff out there for you. And of course, after us today, we've got Crane, we've got uh, Evan Silva, and we got Rich Rebar with the uh, pick six coming up after us. Um, but uh, John Austin, I'm going to give you a quick who you got because we have a minute left. Uh, I'm going to go with, what do I want to go with? Who will you not fade in DK GPPs, Bernard or Gordon? Austin, I already know John's answer. Uh, I'm going to fade Bernard if, uh, if I'm choosing between those two. I'm going against what you guys said there. Uh, 
So I like the Chicago defense a decent amount, and Bernard has been known to choke in the past. I'm going to stick with the upside of Gordon. Ooh, all right. Well, we will see about that one, fellas. But uh, all right. Well, thanks so much for checking us out. Check them out over at Football Guys. Uh, of course, tons of great content over here at Roto Grinders the rest of the week. And um, fellas, good luck in your contest. Let's uh, let's rebound this week. You know, I need to rebound. <laughs> I need to need to do a little bit better after that embarrassing performance a week ago. But lastly, thank you so much to all you guys watching telling you all the feedback I got this last weekend, one-on-one -on -one, incredible makes us feel so good about the job that we do here, hearing it from you guys. So we'll talk to you again, same time, same place next week for John and Austin. I'm Dan Bach wishing you best of luck this week 14 from football guys and rotogrinders.com. We'll see everybody. Mm -hmm.